Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another radio meter. This one is called type MSM1B electronic chronometer. I've been googling around like crazy. I can't find any manuals, explains, any released material anywhere from radio meter or any websites whatsoever. So if you happen to have any kind of old manuals, anything at all, please send it to me. Um, yeah, scan it and send it, obviously, right? That would be fantastic. So a chronometer is a thing that can measure time. And the, this unit got a start and a stop input connector. We got trigger levels, positive and negative trigger levels for the positive or for the start and exactly the same for the stop. And we got ranges from microseconds, milliseconds and seconds. We got two different calibrations. So I think that they really made the whole manual here on the front page, right? I mean, look at that. So this is calibration that goes here. And then there's another calibration that handles this range. And I believe this little C we have here is calibration, right? And then there is this zero. Obviously, we just adjust this one for zero. And uh, to do the calibration, we hit this calibration, hold this in while we dial this one and reset and set zero, I think. What is this one? Dead contacts. That is so funny. I haven't seen that one here before. And we've got integration as well. Hmm. Well, well, it's quite interesting. I need to open this one and do a deep visual inspect before I power it up. I think it is from about 1960. This is just my first guess. And I also think it is tube based. I think we will, let's guess. Let's uh, perform a little guess, okay? I think we'll find four tubes, <laughs> but I don't know yet. That's just how I think. I mean, this is probably tube based, right? I will need a little, this is probably a constant current generator. And uh, then it stores the time as charge per capacitance. And then we have some uh, amplifying tube and a bridge uh, coupling so that there's zero current in and out of the capacitor. And this way it will stay uh, like that after the stop. And if there is any leak or any problems, then we will see it's floating instead of staying at the end but all these things is of course uh, just a my imagination let's uh, let's open and see uh, what it really is I'm still doing my little visual inspection inside I don't really find any alarming issues my capacitors didn't leak we don't have any uh, burned power resistor or any leaked rectifier bridges or anything like that and uh, I can say that I totally misjudged the complexity of this unit. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really, really full of tubes. So that will be the start circuit. Yes, it even says that on the little printed circuit board here, start unit. And uh, that will be the serial number or product number for the circuit board, 59 is what they start with. So could this be designed in 59? So you got, what is that? Only two tubes on the start board. I think this one here is probably a, what is that? Yes, this is a power supply, right? I don't know. Some of it is definitely power supply. Uh, yeah, see, voltage regulator tubes. Three of them. Uh huh. 
Oh, a little diode tube, huh? A dual diode. And then, and here is the stop unit. Wow, that's interesting. PL21 ECF. Why are they using PL tubes as well? That's interesting. I really don't have a schematic or anything, so that's annoying. So that was two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven tubes. And uh, yeah, most of them got more than one device in them. So that will be dual this and dual that, right? So. The first little thing that I found, this, this is a classic voltage selector and uh, fuse uh, combined thing. So you unscrew the fuse and then you can uh, change the voltage because I want, uh, want it for 240 volt. And this is just always like this. Those fuses, they just corrode like that, creating all sorts of unstable contacts. So I have to replace the fuse and then I can start my uh, first power up. So I think I'm uh, ready to uh, do my first little power up and test. I have created a little test signal with some uh, a start and a stop pulse. And what is the time? So that's two milliseconds per division. And then uh, I want to play with the milliseconds first. Let's see if I can get anything up and running here. And uh, yeah, let's see if it blows up. Maybe it works. Let's switch on some mains. I left this one on and uh, I'm now dialing up the supply voltage real slow while I'm uh, monitoring the power consumption. This is a real good way to uh, start up old stuff like this. And I will just, I'm about 226 and it's using 50 watts and uh, look at that we've got nice uh, light in it and uh, what have we got right here I probably um, should try and hit the cal cal goes to zero reset and set zero. oh so reset and set zero and then you read the read the time and i am in 30 milliseconds for full range and uh, my pulse is 8 milliseconds so it should have been a tiny bit more but this is my very very first test i didn't even see, okay zero is spot on and if i hit cal this is something I don't understand. I was expecting it to go all the way up there, but again, I don't have the manual, so what can I do? See, the value goes down to six right now. So what I want to do is I want to try and change the stop time. So and now I will move the stop time two more milliseconds like that, and then I will hit burst. Oops. Hello, here, burst. Why didn't it change anything? So it's so that is six. Okay, hmm. Let's try and three milliseconds more. Ah, look at that. Aha, this thing only measures, it only takes one measurement. So I have to manually hit the reset and set zero. And while I, when I release this uh, button, then it takes a new measurement. Okay, so that is how it works. Okay, fine. So now I'll go down to 10 again. I will turn on my pulse. So now it's ready. And then I hit the button here and then it goes 10. Ha ha! What the heck? So, so it is accurate. It really, really works. <laughs> At least in, in this range. So what if I go 10? And then hit zero. It goes all the way up. Almost. 
there's probably a little bit of calibration here and something like that but but it's it's really working how nice now you're going to enjoy this see what i'm done what i've done here i changed my settings to a delay of one seconds and i repeat this every 10 seconds right so here's the cool thing i am now in three second uh, range and i hit the measure zero thing and all we have to do is yes and then it goes one second and you see that it, it goes from the start to the stop it charges the capacitor and then shows what is going on on the on the meter here so that is so nice i think it's really fascinating it can store this charge on a capacitor and keep it forever now we'll leave it here for an hour and see if it's still there so in about one minute one hour passed and uh, I don't know if we look really really careful I think it's actually the needle went maybe up a quarter of a hair <laughs> how is that possible so this is a one second energy storage in a capacitor left in a I mean, this is 60 years old equipment and it still work to this kind of insane low leakage. I, I'm totally in shock about how this is possible um, to make this kind of counter that accurate and making it analog. That is, yeah, I wouldn't dare to take the challenge to do this today. I would of course go digital but that's just how i would have done it but they really took the challenge and they did it here is a five second pulse and this is a nice charge <laughs> for that totally amazing so let's look a little bit more on the cool things inside this unit so as uh, i already shown the input and the output i mean the start and the stop boards they look a lot like the same and they also use a more or less the same sort of um, tubes so let's just look here at the at the stop one we can see that i think this one here is the first tube uh, is a pl21 so the pl21 is a, a tyratron or a um, gas filled tetrode that one is very very special and i don't even have one in my tube collection which is really really bad but here we got two of them in this unit so that is really nice uh, it's a, still a 6.3 volt filament tube and that was a little bit confusing about the P because that is normally a higher voltage uh, filament but that's not the case it's a, still a 6.3 volt just like uh, all the other tubes in this uh, unit so it's a gas filled and we got two grids and uh, I think what they're doing here is they're using one of the grids at the, as the trigger point and the other grid is of course the input signal and uh, with this gas-filled um, tube, you have some sort of a feed-forward or a like an amplification sort of a very, very fast uh, rise time. When you activate this tube, it goes more active. So um, that is why they use these for uh, triggering. So uh, we have a like an analog or digital signal that has some sort of a rise time and when it goes near the trigger point then this one goes uh, crazy so to speak and gives you a really nice triggering oh yeah there's another really funny component here look at that one so is that a diode or a capacitor or something like that i can't really remember but it looks like something in between there i also see um 
the OA200 diodes. I found two of them in this uh, unit. One is right there, and the other one is mounted over the, the meter for reverse protection. Um, the timing. So here is the timing setup. Look at all those decks and funny things. See, down here we got a capacitor with a lot of connections to that capacitor. And you can see the, um, the leakage isolation distances. And there's also another little capacitor right there. And this one is for the fast timing. See, there's a little variable and a Styroflex or some a film capacitor, right, with super low leakage as well. I will get back to that capacitor here in a moment. So the power supply is board here is not only a power supply. We see the three voltage regulator tubes, the 90C1 tubes and we got a i think a few of these tubes probably this one here is doing some voltage regulation but the other two tubes right here i think they are in charge of handling the um, capacitor charge discharge and so there's a feed forward system um, and by adjusting this perfectly fine you have absolutely zero current going in and out and you can see the signals to that um, switching system here is done by wires hanging in thin air. And that is because of low leakage. Let's look at the capacitors here from the top. So this one down there is the fast capacitor. It's also mounted in um, some acrylic uh, plastic for low leakage. And here is the super nice capacitor for all the higher speeds or you know, for the, all the higher time. Because this one has, of course, higher value compared to this one, right? So this one consists of four values. 0, 0 0.0, what is that? Is that double zero zero? I don't know. 24 and then 0 0.025. 0.25 and 2.5 so there's probably a reason why this is not a 5 as well and so they're compensating or they're adding a little bit to ad make it adjustable right but plus minus 0.5 percent and this one here is manufactured in 63 this is of course the production stamp number or uh, something like that but that will be the year 63. And this one was even tested three times. You see, one, two, and three. So this capacitor is, here is probably custom designed for this uh, unit. So I think I will end this video right here. And right now I have already shown you all the fancy smancy things about this. If uh, anybody gets uh, finds any kind of uh, published information and schematic any kind of technical stuff i would really like to um to have access to it so uh yeah please comment and please contact me i will uh, put in uh, the full tube list in the description so you can see what kind of tubes this thing contains all right thank you very much for watching Bye-bye, see you very, very soon.